Black Widow Down and Dirty Tricks video project. Um, these are the final projects we've done. This is the one that was done the live feed. This is the one that's uh, featured in this video, which is much more detailed than the one in the live feed. Uh, so if you've downloaded the project, if you've gone to my store, you've gotten the work files, which include uh, the two different webs. This is the one we use in the project. This is an optional one for you to use. Um, the Black Widow Silhouette, which is mainly what we use in the project. The body insert, the full detail one, which is uh, for different applications. We didn't use it in the project, but it's optional for you guys who want to. The web, the flies, or any little extra things you throw in, the materials list. You know, what this video is going to do, it's going to walk you through start to finish of how we did the background and the prep behind it, getting it ready, getting that sealed up, and then coming to do the Black Widow herself which only takes an hour um, with discussion. I do the whole project in an hour, and that shows you how you can walk through a very simple project with really big impact. So uh, have fun with the project. I look forward to seeing what you guys do afterwards and what you do with the lessons learned from it. So enjoy the project, and thanks for watching. Okay, here's the prepping stage for the Black Widow project. What we have here is a 10 by 18 inch piece of aluminum with plastic core in the middle. These are available at many sign suppliers as well as Coast Airbrush and other places like that. Uh, I've scuffed it down with red scotch right in the gray just to make sure everything's evenly dull. Wipe it down, degrease it. And then make sure you tack it off like I just did after the degreaser. I have my base tone mixed up here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run a band of it down the center and we're gonna have a red candy center mixed black on the edges. That'll set up for the masking for the web. What I did, I made a base coat candy, two parts candy, which in this case is the blood red from the Candy 2.0 line of Createx, and a aluminum medium from the Auto Air line, which was this one right here, the aluminum base medium. I chose the medium instead of the fine or the coarse because I didn't want it super sparkly to take away from the um, Black Widow itself. So I went with the medium. You can go with the fine if you want a uh, less Let's sparkle. So we're gonna blow it off. Make sure we tack it. We're gonna test our spray. I want a kind of a spot. I don't want it, I don't want a huge fan because I want to run down the center and kind of build it. But remember, when you're doing fades like this, you want to walk the panel end to end, start off it, and come off at the other end. Don't stop in the middle because you'll get a big, you'll get a big hot spot. You don't want that. Okay? So first coat kind of light. Just keep air moving over it. You don't want to use a heat gun. A lot of guys use heat guns. And what the problem with that is you can dry it too fast and you can plasticize the paint. And then you get bonding issues and things like that. You don't want that. If you if you if it's cold out and you want to use a heat gun, get one that's adjustable. You can go really, really, really low just to warm it up. See how it's starting to flash off now? That's what you're waiting for. Just light coats. Especially for that first coat. You don't want that first coat super wet. This one's gonna puddle up and candy on you. Okay. We're gonna let that dry. It doesn't look like much on camera. But you're just going for something even. This is actually a really good project to learn how to spray candy base coats. Because in the end, it doesn't have to be super perfect because we're going to have graphics, we're going to have webs, we're going to have all sorts of stuff going on. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit more pressure. And we're going to let that dry. I might actually add some fine into my cup and maybe tone this down a little bit. So I'll do that on the next pass. Okay, this was flashed off for a few minutes. I put a little fine in here because I, I think the flake's a little too big for what I want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna candy over this with straight candy because I want it really rich. But I didn't want 
to do a bright silver than like five coats of candy to get to it. I wanted it uh, done pretty quick, so make the base coat candy first, and then go over regular candy. So make sure that center is really hot. I'm gonna fade off to the side. And again, let that tack off and we'll get it ready. I might put one more pass and so I'll go straight to candy. But you want to get a nice tone. You can see it from here. It's hot in the center and it gets uh, darker towards the sides. Okay, before I do the final candy, I'm pretty happy with the center. I'd like to get a little bit darker on the edges. So all I'm going to use is my uh, TH. I'm going to use the round tip instead of the fan, but you can use the fan if you want a wider coverage. I, I want it round so I can just kind of airbrush style blend it. So I'm using the Candy 2O black candy for this. So that way the metallic still shows through. It's really light. Because the goal is going to be when we do the web pattern on top of this is we want to have a red web coming in and then turn into black as it goes over the red. So it's almost like a flip-flop. Um, it'll just give the background something interesting. I think that's going to be enough. Yep, that's cool. We're going to leave it at that. And let that flash off. And then we're going to do straight candy on top of it. So what I have decided to do is I put some more fine um, silver in here. And I put a touch of the Quicksilver Chrome. So I want to get the center a little brighter than it is before I candy. Because I really want the center of the widow to really show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choke down this needle and almost make it up. I'm going to make it like a point. See that nice hot center? Yeah, that nice hot center right down there. That's what I want to see. And this color is going to come in great when I do the web because I'll just use this to go right across it and it'll really show up nice in the black. So I want to talk about heat guns or air dryers for a second. If you're going to use a heat gun, you want to use a heat gun. Um, you want to get something like this. Something that has low temperature, different speeds. That way you're not heating up or burning or melting the paint because you can do that. Um, and I've seen guys do it with uh, plastic parts, heat it up too much, and you actually start to warp the plastic. So you turn it on. I'm going to go down to low. Fast speed. And just slowly going to work over it. Okay? If you need to, you really only need to do this if it's really heat, if it's like raining out and you're not in a like, temperature control spray booth. Then you might have to do this. If you're in a normal shop setting or you got a nice, nice temperature, you don't even have to do this. Let it dry. It takes the same time to dry as a solvent. 10 to 15 minutes between coats, let it flash, and then you're good to go. But I want to make sure this is good and dry before I do my candy layer. And this one, I like this one because when you shut it off, it actually goes through a cooling cycle. So you don't. You know, it, it cools it down before it actually shuts it down. All right, that's ready to rock and roll. 
I'm gonna put candy on it, and then we'll seal that up before we put the mask on it. I never like going uh, masking directly over candies. I always put an coat clear barrier in between it, let that cure. Um, in the ideal world, I would let it cure for the day and then do it the next day. And that's dried out really nice. I tack it off. You'll know, you'll know it's good if you can tack it off. But you don't want to tack it when it's not ready. So check off to the side somewhere. So this one a little bit more even. Again, if I was doing an overall car, I'd be using uh, either the 1.2 or I'd be going to my um, LPH um, 400. But this is the difference between spraying for artwork and spraying for just solid color. Spraying for solid color, you want to be a very regimented, very precise. When you're doing artwork, you can play around a little bit. Have fun with it, loosen up. It doesn't have to be as crazy technical. Um, it's more about the end result than the technique. Just obviously you don't want it blotchy unless you want that look. I think that's, I think that's fine for what I want. Okay, now that the candy's all dry, I've cut my masking. I'm gonna go directly on top of the candy with it because I'm gonna be doing candy again over the webs itself. So I don't want to intercoat this yet. I'll wait till this stage is done, the webs are done, and then right before we do the um, Black Widow herself. So I apply my mask with the hinge technique. So after we've plotted it, I started to weed it out and you quickly realize weeding it outside is very tricky because there's so many little nooks and crannies and it's only gonna get harder when you get to the center. So it's easier to do it once it's applied. So it's been plotted out and I put the transfer tape on top. I'm using the um, R-Tape AT75. What's nice about this is this stuff stretches almost at the same rate as the vinyl. And if you use a heat gun, it's it, you can actually wrap it really well around a heavily curved surface. So that's why I prefer to do that. Okay, so after that's applied, I line it up to my board. I put a piece of tape across the middle or somewhere thereabouts, and that's called the hinge. That's the hinge point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll back the mask. I usually roll it with stuff like this. I kind of open it like a book or like a magazine. I'm gonna roll it open, taking my time, especially if it's weeded. If it's not, then it's usually not as bad, but take your time, roll it back. And we'll stop just about for the hinge. And then I just do a little snap. And then just pull it out like that. Uh, you could go and do take a knife, but you gotta be really careful. So then I take my squeegee. I use these, these nice um, plastic ones that have the felt on them. And I usually do felt sides first. I'm gonna softly work it out. Notice the way I'm working. I'm working from here out. That way the air goes away. You're less likely to get bubbles. And the one thing you notice about this FBS Le Bleu mask is when it's down or when you're working with it, it really contours nice. Um, it picks and weaves nice. It um, it just really works pretty much perfect overall. Works on solvent, works on water. And it's very, very thin. Uh, almost as thin as their uh, FBS Gold Mask, which is based off their KTUG Gold uh, Tape. And that's a little thinner than this, but it's paper, so it doesn't have the same contouring. So what I did there, you notice, I rolled it back, I pulled the backing off, then I pulled the hinge out Make sure you pull the hinge out before you do that. That way you don't you don't want to drop a piece of vinyl in here. And 
and you want to work it out from there. Then I go to the hard plastic side. Really get it all worked in nice and flat. And now we're going to remove the transfer tape. I always use these plastic razor blades by uh, Scrape Right. I got these years ago. Uh, I never found them anywhere else but um, certain sign suppliers. And uh, since then, Coast Airbrush has made them available. So if you go to coastairbrush.com, they'll have these Scrape Right blades. There are other plastic razor blades out there. These are the only ones I found that had a really sharp corner, really nice edge, and they pick and weed great without disturbing your surface. Now this stage, you wanna go, you wanna go slow. There's a lot of cuts here. See how sometimes it starts to pull them up? That's why you go slow. You go fast, you have a problem, you can't go backwards. I really push down good on this, so it's, it's down. This stuff is fairly rigid. It seems really hard, but if you warm it up at all and heat it up, it slides right off, and it stretches really easy. And there you go. So, now your mask is on. It's all laid flat. And I'm going to take my razor, plastic razor blade, and I'm going to start picking. The nice thing is, you get a point and you'll see this vinyl's thick enough where it holds together pretty well even on the small stuff where some vinyls that are this thin tear up um, when they come off and I would not recommend the gold mask for this um, mainly because the paper type makes these small little cuts hard to see and you're going to get a because it's so small and it's paper type you're going to get a lot of tearing so you're just going to work your way around and pull it all off and i'm just going to keep going Okay, now I'm at the tail end of this, talk about a few things. So if you notice, it came off really easy. I'm just going to work through these, rest of these. If you're having trouble seeing your cuts at this point, what you can do prior to weeding, do this prior, don't do it now, you can take a little bit of uh, pounce powder, um, black pounce powder graphite, um, and run it over lightly and just kind of wipe it off. And what it will do is it will fill in the cracks and you can see your cuts easier. You can just as easy do it dirt off the floor. Just make sure it's not anything, you know, really nasty. Dust is fine. You see how easy that's just pulling out? Just working my way around. And making sure I got everything. Now, I probably should have upsized this. I cut it exactly 12 by 18. This panel's probably a little off. Um, so what you probably would do um, is cut it, you know, add a quarter inch. That way it runs off the page. And because uh, what I'm gonna have to do now, I'm gonna have to go around and just fill in little bits so I don't end up with a red line around the edge. So I'm just gonna go in like this and just kinda fix the webs. That way it all looks good. I'm not gonna I'm trying to avoid, you know, adding tape and then cutting it because I just don't want cut marks in the panel. The benefit of using the plotter is a knife never touches this. So you end up with a very clean painting, a very secure painting as far as you're not dug down into your metal. You don't have to worry about paint separation down the road, things swelling up on you. Because a lot of times what happens, those cuts look fine. When the paint job's first done, it's a few months later where they start to uh, 
swell up and shrink and come apart. And that doesn't have much to do with the paint. That's just poor process. So I'll try to avoid cutting as much as possible, which is why the plotter comes in pretty handy. And if you do have to cut, you know, just go light. That's really the key. There's not gonna be a lot of paint on this edge anyway, so it doesn't have to be crazy perfect. I mean, if you want to, you could just cut across like this. And those little webs that aren't connected, they're gonna be off to almost nothing. So you're not even gonna really notice it. So, your choice, or just in your file, whatever software you're using, just upsize it like a you know, quarter inch all around. And let it, uh, let it just overhang the panel. That's it. So she is ready to spray. So the plan here is to run the same red we used at the beginning, that red candy base coat on the edges. And then we'll use a very weak black mixed with um, probably the same candy red um, and tone in the webs. Okay, so what I've done here I'm using the same candy base coat ready made up. I added a little bit more Quicksilver Chrome into it. Or if you don't have Quicksilver Chrome, just add a little bit more fine. And what I'm gonna do is where the black is showing through, I'm gonna hit that with red. And I'm gonna make sure I got all my little cuts because I didn't pull that one. And there's a lot of little ones in this, so just do your diligence to make sure you get them all. There's another little guy. I don't wanna do it afterwards. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fog in the red. On both sides. And for this, I'm just using a regular Eclipse CS. Nothing crazy. Get that in nice. Make sure we carry all the way over. I'm, again, you're not flooding this. You don't want to be flooding it against the mask, even though you have the mask there. The goal to keep the mask really thin, I mean the paint film really thin, is light layers. Do it in light passes. That way you don't have this really thick edge you're peeling up. Or risk delamination. That does happen with people. If you go too wet too fast, you end up building up a lot of paint against the mask and that's where you get that huge edge and you don't want that all right so now that's done I use my trusty th again i'm using the, the round cap you could use the fan for this pattern as well um so what i've done is i've mixed up basically a i took the red candy straight and add it to black candy. So maybe 20% black to red candy. That way you end up with this really, like a maroonish color, almost black. Cause I don't want this web to be super black cause I want the, um, the black weather to pop off of it. And this is just gonna be really light. So I reduce it down pretty well. And sometimes once you spray, that's where you start noticing the little buggers you missed. So I missed one there. If I can get it now, not too worried about it, even though it's wet. Now here's the thing, the Black Widow's going right in the center. Don't flood a lot of paint here and create, don't flood a lot of paint here and make a big edge for yourself to battle with later. More towards the outside. Again, light passes. See that color difference? It's gonna show up. So realistically, if you're still seeing red through here, that's good. 
If you're not seeing red, it's gone to full black. When you unmask it, it's going to be super dark. Um, and probably overdid a little bit. It's still going to be fine. Um, I just like the more subtlety aspect of this project instead of having like a big dark web in there. If you wanted to have a silver web, like a Spider-Man type of thing, you could do that. You could do a chrome web. That would be really cool. I'm trying to keep everything in the, the same family. And you're going to let that dry out. Keep some air on it. Maybe blow a little candy red if you want to tone it or leave it as is. And you can tone it afterwards. Whatever you want to do. I'm probably going to do it after. Because I don't want to build a lot of candy in here and have to deal with pulling a lot of paint edge. I want to keep the paint edge as minimal as possible. And what that will do is the least clear, the less clear you'll need to bury things smooth. So... We'll let this cure out and we'll move on to the next step. So another drying method, if you want to speed things along a bit, is one of these air blowers. This is by Nesta Wada. And basically what it does, just hooks in. And because it's filtered here, it blows a nice smooth cone of air over the whole project. So opposed to use a heat gun, this is what you want to use, something along these lines. Okay, and they make stands for them. You can mount them, the corner brackets, all sorts of stuff, and you can just blow air on your projects or across them. And that's gonna help speed things along. So what I do at this point, before I start pulling mask off, I wanna check a couple and just see, make sure I can see everything. Because I don't wanna reapply this stuff. It never lines up. Get under that edge. And you want to make sure you have some contrast. First one's always a little tricky. Trying to be really careful. Yeah, I can see that. Let's pull one next to it just so I can double check. Now, if you're really heavy handed with a blade and scratching, you may want to put a clear coat barrier, let that cure sand it, and then do the mask. That way you're not worried about digging into your candy base coat underneath. Uh, that's totally your call. But you, if you look at it, you can see that really nice. And there's no edge, zero edge actually. And once it's all off, I can see what I'm looking at and I'll probably candy tone the whole thing. And if you want to go inside, you can check. Make sure the black was enough. Rip, roll it back. Roll a second one back. Yeah, I think that's good. But I'll still be able to see through it. So, check two sections. And uh, go from there. So, back to time-lapse mode. All right, everything's masked off, unmasked I should say. I'm gonna give it a little wipe down with a little wax and grease remover, solvent type. You don't wanna use water-based solvent, a uh, water-based wax and grease remover on a water-based paint. You'll remove it I'm using a solvent base. This case, it's a KC10 from House of Color. I'm just lightly going over it. And now you can see, got any mistakes. Now I did have a few areas where I cut in into the base, but it's very minor, and which is fine because it's kind of just in that candy layer. I'm gonna do a candy wash over the top of this anyway, so we're gonna be fine. And that'll get any overspray off, plus you can check to see if you've missed any. 
a little piece of mask. I'm gonna tell you right now, you don't want to find the mask later after you finished it and went to clear coat and you go to wet sand and it turns blue on you or yellow or whatever you used. So check it now, check it twice and should be cool. It's a cool looking web, like the pattern. Now I'm gonna mix up some straight candy and I'm just gonna wash over the top and the sides. Not too much in here. Just, I don't want these to be that bright. I want them to tone out a little bit more. Okay, so straight candy. I'm going to my TH on this one. I don't want to go to the 80 or larger guns too much candy. I, that's why this is really perfect. And when that happens, I just dip a little paint. That's my fault. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry that. I'm just going to pat it out. It could be candy anyway. Don't wipe. You wipe it gonna burn all the way down through just kind of blot it out simple as that see mistakes happen the difference between a professional and an amateur is a professional knows how to fix his mistakes okay just kissing over the whole thing I want these webs out here to be a little bit more red. Let's say that's all she wrote. We're going to let that dry. Now, this is what we're going to put the intercoat on. We're gonna let that sit. We're gonna give that a scuff. I'm gonna let that sit for the next day. That way it's all nice and cured. We could go with something a little bit harder. You could go like an hour later. With this much layering of metallics and candies and graphics, and it's a good stopping point. Let it cure out. That way everything can settle in before you do the next part, which is, you know, the money part. That's the, the, um, the black widow herself. So we're just gonna go over this. Um, and top coat it and then we'll get back on the next half after that's cured okay time for the next phase just all candied in now I'm gonna seal it up um, because this is candy we want to put a bleed check sealer on top of it so Createx has made the 4040 bleed check sealer this is gonna go on top of anything with heavy amounts of candy in it that way when you're doing white or opaque artwork on top of it the dyes don't leach back into the artwork this will stop it and give us a barrier to work on top of if you if you want to go further you could do a high solids clear you know a 2k clear lock it all down wet sand it the next day um you could use any number of methods so for this we're going to use a 40 40 bleed check mix it into a gun turn it out and go right on top. And it's very important, don't go too wet. And you want to let it dry. You want to let it dry matte between coats. So let this go. If you want to get your air dryer out, get one of these out, turn it on. Let it dry matte, and then do your next coat. And last coat. Put the last one on a little heavier, more even. We'll let that dry out nice. And then we can do the artwork right on the top of it. If you need to scuff it, you could use a gray scotch right and scuff right on top of it. Um, you're not really gonna need to because your next layer of artwork will bite right into it. If you want it a little bit harder, if you're nervous about the edges from the graphics, at this stage, once this is dry, you can put a high solid clear on top of it and then set up for the artwork the next day. And that concludes the first portion of this project. That's all prepped and ready. Now we're going to move on to the Black Widow project itself, which is a great project. It's all done in one take. You'll be able to do this in an hour or so. 
that's how long it took me to do it with talking and I'd like to thank all the sponsors that make these projects possible FBS tapes, the water spray equipment, Craytex colors and the crew over at Coast Airbrush that supply all this stuff to us and uh, make painting cool projects like this possible and let's get ready and move on to the next phase and learn some new down and dirty tricks.